Okay, well, Kevin, it's uh, great to have you here at Edgeley Park. Um, an evening with Kevin Keegan. Uh, a full house, sold out. I know we've had you in the past as manager of Manchester City and you did a bit of scouting over the years. Uh, coming looking at players on a Friday night, didn't you? Played here as well, don't forget. Played here as well. Scum Club United. I think uh, the season I remember, you did the double over as you beat us 2-1 here. And you beat us 2-1 at... Um, what was the old showground in those days. Yeah. And that was my very last goal for Scunthorpe before I moved to Liverpool. So my last goal for Scunthorpe was against Stockport, but we got beat 2-1. Wow, well, not many people might not know that fact. But well, uh, it's, it's a few years ago, it's 50. Wow. That was 1970, so Yeah, 69. and then the big sign into Liverpool. Um, so we're here just a week away from, uh, from the World Cup and England semi-finalists last time out, uh, reached the final of Euro 2020 also. How do you rate their chances in Qatar? Well, I think they're very good. Um, you know, they got to the final against Italy. We're a little bit unlucky, I think. Um, I think it's a World Cup that, when I say it's strange, I don't mean it in necessarily where it is. There's enough been, been said about that, but it's the timing of it, you know, the mm -hmm. halfway through a season. It's also a World Cup where there isn't one team where you think, wow, you know, they're a little bit ahead of everybody else. There's, a, there's six or seven teams, you know, you could say Brazil, Argentina, England, uh, definitely Germany, you can't discount them, uh, Portugal, Italy. They're, they're all in with a chance. It's a World Cup like no other. Normally you have a, a red hot favourite. Yeah. There isn't one for yeah. this one. And with it being um, strangely in the middle of a season that and we've already seen a lot of players picking up injuries. so. How big a difference do you think that will make? Uh, what impact is that going to have? Well, I mean, uh, you need a bit of luck. You know, you don't want, for example, if you're England uh, fans, you don't, and manager in particular, you don't want anything to happen to you, your top players. Harry Kane, for example, but mm. I could give you others. Um, so, uh, yeah, but the good news about that, it's, it's been the same for everybody. You know, that's German yeah. season has been curtailed and broken up. So has the Portuguese, so has the Italian. And, in South America too. So, um, yeah, it's a strange time to have a World Cup. I've been to Qatar. It's it's very hot, but I think they've got the air-conditioned stadiums, things like that. But uh, yeah, I think it's a, it'll be an interesting World Cup because, simply because I think there's it's a real. Don't be surprised if one of the smaller nations win yeah. it. It's it could be that could be up for grabs. It could be up for grabs, grabs now. You played in some great England teams over the years. Some of those teams never actually got to the World Cup finals. And then you got to 82 yourself where you were carrying a bit of an injury in 82 yourself, wasn't you? So you played with some good sides. You managed some great England players as well that we had. How does the players that you played with and the players that you manage compare maybe with the current England setup? Well, I think the current England setup, they're probably um, more athletic. That's what the thing they've got under Gareth. You know, Gareth I had as a player when I was England manager. And uh, Gareth's got them playing in a way where everybody contributes. It's a real team effort. Um, but obviously when I played, um, back in 82, sadly, for Trevor Brooking and myself, who yeah. were probably two of the key players, we both got injured. So we only came on for, for about 25 minutes of the last game. And we actually didn't lose a game. No, we didn't. But we did came home, so yeah. uh, you know that won't happen uh, very often. Um, but it happened to us, and, and that was my only World Cup. So I think I think I'm 21 minutes in a World Cup for all the times I played, yeah. 63 times for England. But obviously, just that 19, 20 minutes, whatever it was, 21 minutes in in a World Cup. So that was the one sort of part of my England career as a player yeah. that I regretted. As a manager, obviously, I found it pretty tough to to get the best out of the squad that I had, but like you said, I had some very good players. You know, I had David Beckham, I had Paul Scholes, obviously, from just down the road. They were great players, yeah. um, but we just couldn't get it all together as a team. And, and uh, you know, whether that's down to, sometimes I think the English season takes a lot out of players. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not as demanding in Germany if you play for Bayern Munich. I know that from my experience playing for Hamburg for three years. Yeah. It's not as competitive in, yeah. in, in, in our league every game, every week. Don't Very care intense, who you play, yeah. they can beat you yeah. if you're just off, off mm -hmm. colour. Whereas you could go out in Germany, and I, I would say the same about France and Italy. Uh, you know, the big clubs tend to win all the games and always be at the top. Here, yeah, it's a bit more competitive. And, and that you get a World Cup at the end of a really tough season of 38 
yeah. real competitive yeah. games and some cups as well yeah. and European Championships. So you can see why players feel tired. Uh, this World Cup, they're all going to be tired. That's the good news, not just the England players, yeah. all of them. Just going back to, uh, you mentioned there in 82, yourself and Trevor Brooking came and you, you were both injured when you arrived. We've got the squad that's been announced now. We've got Calvin Phillips coming in from Manchester City. He's played 50-odd minutes or a couple of games. Looking back from your experience, would you say that is a risk bringing a player in or is it a risk worth taking, which is what Gareth seems to think? Well, I think it tells me that Gareth thinks a lot of the player, mm -hmm. first of all. But also, you could look at the other side and say, well, he's fresh. He's, yeah. had a, he's had a good break. He'll have been doing his fitness. Obviously, he's ready to play uh, now. So for Man City, whenever they're ready to put him in. So I think Gareth's just, just thinking, he's that good and he's so important to us that maybe I'll just prepare to take a little bit of a risk here. Yeah. And I think it's a risk worth taking. And, and you know, that's why he's done it. Yeah, fantastic. And looking at this current England team, if there's one player you could pick out that you would have liked to have played alongside yourself who, who would you choose who stands out for you who would you have liked to play with yeah probably two of them uh, Mount mm -hmm. uh, definitely I think he's, he's a clever player doesn't give the ball away gets you know he's playing at a level where you can see he sees all the pictures on yeah. the field not all players do that but at the international level uh, most of them do he does it particularly well and I think Jack Grealish I mean if you turn the clock back a year before he went to Man City, if we can find a bit of the Jack Grealish that's Man City that doesn't yeah. give the ball away, <laughs> and a bit more of the Jack Grealish that was Aston Villa that, that could change a game and go past Some people. chances, yeah. Yeah, I think those two players could be uh, the ones who just take you through in a game which is tight. And I think a lot of games will be tight. When you play Italy, when you play Spain, when yeah. you play Portugal, Germany, they're not going to be games where you're going to go and win 2, 3, 4 nil and things like that. They're going to be pretty tight games and that's when you need uh, the people like I've just mentioned Grealish, Mount, there's probably a couple of others that I haven't mentioned but they're the ones who, who are going to just do that little uh, trick that makes a goal out of nothing and so they're the two I'm looking at. Can I ask you your favourite player was when you played for England? Well my very favourite player I played with um, was uh, Alan Ball, um, you know my first England game yeah. was when Sir Alf Ramsey was manager and, and Bobby Moore led me out. So you can wow. imagine he, he got sacked after two games <laughs> when I came into the squad. So I, we, we, we lost um, Sir Alf Ramsey. But uh, definitely um, Alan Ball as a player, not so much with England, but I played with him with Stampton as well. Yeah. But uh, Bobby Moore, I would say, was, was my very favourite. Of course, playing with has to be Trevor Brookin or Sir Trevor Brookin. As Sir he Trevor, knows. great be player. Because we just had that... Um, it, we just seem to know what each other is thinking, you know, people call it telepathic, but it's just understanding the game at that level. And uh, he seemed to know where I wanted the ball and I seemed to know where he wanted to put it. And, and we, we we caused a lot of mayhem when we got playing together. Unfortunately, you know, for the World Cup, we didn't manage to be yeah. fit enough. And I think, you know, that cost us a, a good run in that World Cup. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Kevin, thank you for your time. We only got about 10 minutes before we take you outside now and uh, introduce you to the audience as a... Uh, a full house there waiting to be entertained and, and really, really fortunate to have you here at Edgeley Park. So thank you for your time and uh, we look forward to a great night and hopefully a great World Cup. Yeah, and good luck Stockport County. Thank you.